Storytelling has been around since the dawn of time. It was the spoken word, or cave drawings, during the early age of man. Later came writing, theater, radio, television, and film. With movies first appearing over 125 years ago, the medium has changed a great deal over time. The early motion pictures were very simple, a train coming into the station, a horse galloping, and a sneeze. For a while, it seemed as if movies may be a passing fad. Not even the early adopters had a lot of faith or vision for the movies. Film needed something that would help it stand apart from these other methods of storytelling, something that would help capture the imagination of audiences and inspire a new generation of cinema directors. You may have heard of our subject from the somewhat recent Martin Scorsese film, Hugo. Ben Kingsley plays a down-on-his-luck George Millier, a once great movie maker reduced to a toy kiosk owner. Georges Méliès was a pioneer in the film industry that relied heavily on his experience with the stage to guide him through a time when making movies was an uphill battle. If that wasn't enough, he had rivalries with some of history's greatest figures that left him broke and nearly forgotten. I'm Matt Dahlberg, and visionary Georges Méliès is a hidden gem of history. Before lights, camera, action, Georges Méliès led a deceivingly simple life in Paris as a supervisor in his family's shoe factory. He went to school in highly esteemed institutions, he learned English at a young age, and had all the makings of a proper businessman. Despite all of this, Georges was an aspiring artist searching for a chance to make it on his own. He had loved the creative arts since he was a child putting on puppet shows, creating his own marionettes, and sketching in his notebook during lectures. Melier got his chance in 1888 when his father, Jean-Louis, retired. Georges promptly sold the family business and, with the money, invested it in his future in show business. Melier purchased the Robert Houdin Theater, where he had been performing as a magician, and made immediate renovations. He also improved his content over time creating 30 new illusions over the span of less than a decade. This success, however, did not satisfy the young artist. George attended a private screening of a new invention, a cinematograph, the predecessor to both the modern film camera and film projector. This experience would change his life forever. Melier began diverting resources to purchase this invention, but had to buy an inferior product and modify it himself to serve his needs. The Robert Houdin Theater was now showing films alongside his stage performances. Again, simply showing movies would not satiate the Frenchman, and in 1896, Georges began writing, directing, filming, and starring in his own films. Many hurdles awaited the young entrepreneur before he even began. First was the question of making proper camera film. It wasn't mass-produced at the time, so George brought photography film and developed his own camera film through trial and error. Next, the camera had to be upgraded. Along with a couple of associates, Melier patented a camera made of cast iron. He continued to make upgrades to equipment over time, but the filmmaker still needed a place to shoot. Montreal Studio was constructed in his own backyard. It was made of all glass to let in as much natural light as possible. It was a beautiful marvel and soon would become home to his most iconic motion pictures. Georges Méliès stood out in a couple of ways from other filmmakers of his time. One way was his mastery of special effects. Now you might be wondering, what kind of special effects did they have back in the turn of the 20th century? Special effects weren't done on computers during this age of cinema. They were forced through combinations of manipulating the raw film in a process known as linear editing and changing the exposure and other settings of the camera. This is much more difficult than I can properly state. Melier used several techniques which he perfected himself, including reversing the film cross-cutting, and advancing the camera forward. Melier even displayed some of his illusions in his movies, like The Decapitated Man and The Vanishing Lady. The other characteristic of a movie from star films 
Melier's production company, was plot. Before Melier, movies were glorified technology exhibitions, used to show the limits of film. In contrast, Melier pushed all boundaries and shared stories with the audiences, from classic stories like Shakespeare's Hamlet to more modern stories from Jules Verne. The settings in Melier's masterpieces went from underwater, the depths of hell, and to the surface of the sun, sometimes all in one cinematic performance. One of Star Film's greatest works, A Trip to the Moon, combined every ounce of what people loved about cinema, from the incredible special effects to captivating moments, A Trip to the Moon was a tale about astronomers who decided to go to the moon by way of shooting a spaceship out of a cannon. The aircraft hit the moon in the eye, creating a stunning visual effect. The astronomers would explore the lunar surface and encounter enemies who would eventually chase them off the moon. It was a simple story, but enthralled audiences and brought new eyes to the cinema internationally. People all over the world began to recognize Melier's brilliance. Unfortunately, not everyone watching was in awe. Certain men, like Thomas Edison, saw Georges Melier as a threat. The father of inventions, Thomas Edison, was also a ruthless businessman. At first, Edison pirated some of Melier's films, ensuring he would make no money in the United States. When he was unable to keep him at bay any longer, Edison formed and presided over the Motion Picture Patents Company. The company controlled most of the film industry and even oversaw star films. Edison required Melier to produce a thousand feet of film a week. That's over 15 minutes of film in just seven days. It's very easy to see how creativity is stifled when the film world is told to mass-produce content instead of simply allowing it to organically come to life. To the Frenchman's credit, he did fulfill his obligation by creating 58 movies in one year. But because of the oversaturation of his films, his popularity was waning. Melier sought a way to escape Edison's oppressive control. He allowed his brother Gaston to produce films in Chicago, New Jersey, and Southern California. The films made in America would satisfy the contract of Edison, while Georges would remain in Paris and search for a way to free himself from the American inventor and make his own films. Melier was a creative genius, but lacked experience as a businessman, which ultimately led to his downfall. He accepted a large fund from a benefactor in France with the hopes of making more of his passion projects similar to his previous successes. In accepting the money, he agreed to give over editing control if the movies did not produce a profit. The films flopped at the box office, his work was re-edited, and George lost his temper again and broke his contract. This breach of conduct forced Melier into massive amounts of debt, who was further hampered by the collapse of the American branch of Star Films due to the ineptitude of Gaston. George was forced to sell the studio, the company, and nearly lost his home. He was penniless, and to make matters worse, his wife, Eugenia, died in 1913. The fallout for Melier continued. Because of the First World War, starting in 1914, the French army forcefully took 400 movies worth of original film and melted it down for the war effort. The war had changed Melier. He no longer wanted to make movies and destroyed everything he owned that related to his work in a fire. He would continue to perform on the stage until the early 20s, but he was nowhere near as successful as he had been in the past, eventually abandoning his stage work entirely. Show business continued without the French visionary. Other icons came along and replaced the once legendary director. Melier faded from the limelight and eventually from the memories of the people who once loved his movies. Georges Melier was resurrected from obscurity towards the late 1920s in somewhat of a similar way as the movie Hugo portrays. A French author tracked down Melier 
and interviewed him for a book about the history of film. Slowly, he began to regain his popularity. The book encouraged other journalists to interview George. He was given a chance to write his memoirs and was bestowed with the highest award a French civilian could receive, the Legion of Honor. One of the greatest nights of George Méliès' life was a gala where the film community honored his contributions by showing some of the best films from his illustrious career. While this did not improve his financial standing, audiences rediscovering Méliès led him to consult many young artists of his time and inspire other generations in the future. Méliès and his second wife, Jean were married from 1925 up until George's death in 1938. For the majority of that time, George operated a toy and candy kiosk in the middle of a train station. The Film Society eventually stepped in to provide for the Meliers with a home, alleviating the need for George to work long hours without Sundays or even holidays off, as was previous the case. Despite his attempts to destroy his greatest works, over 200 of his 500 films still exist to this day by ways of film negatives and prints, albeit to varying degrees of quality. You can find some of them online and even purchase DVDs of his greatest cinematic wonders. Melier's impact still remains to this day. He was one of the main driving forces behind Walt Disney falling in love with the cinema. He wasn't the only one. Martin Scorsese directed the film Hugo, which is a beautiful homage to Méliès and his life. George Méliès is truly beloved by Hollywood and moviegoers alike. George Méliès is a hidden gem of history. If you have someone in mind who you think should be highlighted as a hidden gem of history, or just want to learn about an undervalued time in history, feel free to email the show at hiddengemsofhistory at gmail.com with your suggestion. Hidden Gems of History could not be made without the help of so many people. This episode especially could not be made without my friend Nathan. Nathan suggested the hidden gem for today and runs a great YouTube channel called Uncharted Media. Uncharted Media is a movie lover's dream for content. They produce weekly videos on cinema and the pop culture surrounding it. Nathan hosts the Uncharted Media Podcast, and I've even collaborated with him in the past on his wonderful channel. Please be sure to check out some of his content, and consider subscribing or leaving a like and a comment on any of his videos. I'm Matt Dahlberg, and this has been Hidden Gems of History.